Hello, I'm Jim Coulson. I'm a member of the board of the Wind Technology Society, which is part of the Institute of Materials, Minerals and Mining. Uh, I'm a fellow of the Institute. I'm also a consultant, wood scientist and timber technologist, and it's part of my job to help people sort out problems and things that go wrong when they use wood. I'm here to talk to you today about wood preservation and some of the things that people misunderstand or get wrong when using wood preservatives. Now, the commonest thing that people think about treated wood is that when you put wood into a preservation vessel or a tank as it's often called is that the preservative goes right through the timber from the outside through to the middle. Well nothing could be further from the truth and normally when timber items are treated what we're trying to do is to simply get a protective coating around the timber which will prevent uh, things like fungus decay organisms getting into the wood and causing problems. Now there is a British standard that uh, I recommend you have a look at. It's called BS 8417 2011 with an amendment. So it's called BS 8417 2011 plus A1 2014. Bit of a mouthful, but it means it had an amendment to it in the year 2014. That's the current version that you should be referring to. And in that you'll find all sorts of complicated tables that tell you how to treat wood. It's a code of practice, so it's advice on the best way to get wood preservatives into different sorts of timbers in different sorts of use situations. And none of them require the wood to be treated absolutely right throughout from its outside through to its core. Even one of the highest level uses which would require a large loading of preservative into the timber doesn't expect that the timber is treated right through. I've got a sample here to show you which is a piece of timber treated with a copper-based preservative, which is one of the commonest types of preservative you can get. You may well have heard of brand names like Tanalith or Osmos. And this piece of timber has been treated with a preservative. These copper-based preservatives often end up with a wood looking greenish in color. And it's a very easily treatable timber. It's a pine, which as a species happens to treat extremely easily. But the, the hardwood element of the pine doesn't treat as well as the sapwood element. The hardwood is the core of the tree and the sapwood is the outer part of the tree. The outer part of the sapwood treats much better than the hardwood, the core part of the tree. And when I turn this around you will see that it's been treated with a reagent, a special indicator spray that shows where the preservative got to in the wood and where it didn't actually reach. So if I turn it around you can see immediately where the red indicator was put onto the wood and it stayed red, there was no preservative. Where it's hit the copper-based preservative, it's turned blue. So the blue shows that we've got full sapwood penetration, as the term is, and we've got reasonable penetration into the edges around the hardwood, but we haven't still got to the core of the hardwood. So that shows, if ever proof were needed, that even at the highest level of preservative, the highest level of pressure in the treatment tank, you still should not expect that the preservative will go right through the timber. And that's with an easily treatable timber like pine. The situation is not so good with many other species. However, there are a number of situations where the timber treatment doesn't really need to go all the way through even the sapwood. Different uses require different levels of penetration and that's what the British Standard 8417 will advise you on. How deep the preservation preservative chemical needs to go into the wood and also how much loading, how much concentration the preservative needs to be there as well. Now if the wood is used in a dry situation, which is regarded as use class one, then you don't need any preservative anyway because the wood's not going to be at any risk of going rotten. If you've got wood in a semi-dry, semi-wet, occasional humidity situation, such as maybe a roof space, then that's regarded as use class two Use class 2 only requires uh, a very small coating of preservative around the outside just to provide a protective barrier against the odd occasional risk of some fungal spores landing on the timber at the time the timber may be just occasionally wet. Now for use class 2, typical use would be roof tiling patterns. I have here a small section of a roof tiling pattern to cut through and you can see that whilst it's got the greenish preservative coating around the outside, there is actually no penetration of preservative gone into it at all. That's not a problem, it is the actual allowable requirement under BS 8417 
For use class 2, it requires a coating of preservative around the outside, but the penetration class, which is the other thing you have to look for in this standard, penetration class is zero. It doesn't require to have any level of depth of penetration in it whatsoever. So it depends on what you're using it for, it depends on the risk, the hazard class level, the use class level that you're putting the timber components to as to how much preservative you need and how far that preservative has to go into the timber. Now in the length of this video I don't propose to go exhaustively through all the different elements that are in BS8417 just to give you basic principles to understand that the timber doesn't have to be treated all the way through, it just has to have a protective coating for certain other higher risk uses it has to go deeper but never all the way through and it also has to have different levels of loading or concentration of preservative depending on the use it's being put to. So just one other example, in a fence post then most of the fence posts in this country, in the UK, are uh, treated uh, spruce, they're made from the timber species of spruce which is treated with preservative in order to give it a longer life. And if you look in BSA 417, it says that spruce, which is a difficult treatment, uh, difficult timber to treat, uh, resistant timber as it's called, then it is required to be treated to a minimum depth of 6 millimetres. Now, you can't actually achieve that very easily with standard spruce because it, it's so resistant to treatment that even under high levels of pressure, you'd be lucky to get one, two, or at the most three millimeters of penetration into the spruce. So what they've developed now is a, a modern take on a very old method called incising. And this piece of timber has, you might see, uh, little, what appear to be cracks in the surface. They're actually not cracks, they are deliberate incisions, hence the process called incising, uh, by rollers with blades fixed to them. And these square section timbers are passed through a series of rollers that then cut a series of slits into all the surfaces of the timber at a depth of about 10 millimetres. So because it's got a series of 10 millimetre slits in the surface, that will then allow the preservative to penetrate much deeper into the wood than it could do otherwise on normal spruce. And you should be able to see, if I hold the end to the camera, that there is a coloration, a greenish coloration, a sort of border of about six to eight millimetres penetration. It won't go all the way through 10 millimetres to the full depth of the slits, but it will at least get preservative down to a minimum of six millimetres, which is the requirement for fence posts for a 15 year life in use in the ground in this country. So incising can help the preservative get deeper into the surface and we get that minimum requirement of at least six millimetres of penetration below the surface. Now I've mentioned one other factor there, that that's for 15 years life, which is the sort of life we would expect from our fence posts. If we're wanting longer life in uh, other materials, other components, and especially in buildings, then we require longer life periods. And there are two other life uh, spans or desired service life, to give them their proper term. And there is a desired service life, first off of 15 years that I just mentioned, then a desired service life of 30 years, and finally, for a lot of buildings, they require a desired service life of 60 years. And of course, the longer the desired service life, as you might expect, the deeper the penetration of preservative, the greater the loading or the quantity of preservative chemicals that need to be in the wood, and also greater restrictions on the different timber species that can be used, and certain resistant timbers can't achieve the 30-year or the 60-year life. So please, I ask you now at the end of this little talk, don't go away with the idea that wood can be treated all the way through. It hardly ever can. And please don't assume that all timbers can be easily treated to the same depth of penetration. They can't. You need to look at the tables in BS8417 to see which desired service life you need, which penetration depth you need, which level of loading and preservative you need for whichever use you're putting it to. Thank you for listening. Thank you.